This is the most requested stone soap of all time. I'm serious. From last year, like last year, almost exactly to like the week, whenever I released my stone series, people were like lapis lazuli, lapis lazuli, and I had never even heard of that before. I also didn't know how to pronounce it. I don't know what the hype around the stone was. I don't know if it's because of pop culture. I don't know if it's because like gems and crystals kind of became in vogue maybe two years ago. And so people just picked out their favorites. I don't know, but people love this stone. And whenever I saw it for the first time in person, I was like, oh, that's why. It's really quite striking and was honestly just a tiddly bit difficult for me to reimagine how I was going to put that in cold process. Sort of the way that opal was where it's like, it's kind of clear and it has like a transparent shimmer. How am I going to like move that into cold process soap? But I'm thrilled with the results. I think you guys are really going to like it. So without further ado, let's make some soap. We begin today by pouring our lye water solution into our oils. The recipe I'm using is down in the description box below. Pour it down the stick blender to avoid getting air bubbles in your soap, which I have decided after multiple, multiple, multiple months of paying attention that it does help. And then we'll blend on high until very, very, very thin trace, just past emulsion. Thin trace achieved, it's now time to pour off some colors. Lapis Lazuli is a very, very blue stone, but there are different colors in there, including gold and gray and white, and there's at least two different tones of blue in the stones that I have. So we're gonna have a gray, a slightly different colored blue, and a teeny tiny bit of white. For the white, we have some titanium dioxide mixed with water. For the gray, we have antique silver mixed with some oil. For the different different colored blue, sort of that accent blue, we have brilliant blue mica mixed with oil. And for the base blue, we have ultramarine blue mixed with water and a little bit of midnight blue crystal mixed with oil. This is going to be a really pretty blending process. These colors are so beautiful. I'm just gonna take my spatula now and run it around the edges of all the containers to make sure that everything is good and incorporated and there's no uncolored soap left. And now it is time to add the fragrance oil. I deliberated long and hard about how I should fragrance this soap and eventually decided that this cool water for men duplication was the perfect way to go because it's just the best blend of sort of an aquatic fragrance with also a very like fresh scent as well. I'm going to blend in this fragrance oil by hand. In the past, it has actually done a very good job of staying liquidy, no rising, no acceleration, no curdling of any sort, no soap on a stick. It's just been really, really easy to do. It stays nice and true in cold process soap. I have this extra pitcher that I'm gonna be using as my blending bucket today. For the first layer, which won't be a very distinct layer, this is not gonna be a perfectly layered soap. It's just gonna be poured in layers so that I can get some gold mica. We're gonna start with a good deal of that blue base. I'm gonna pour in some gray, and I'm also gonna pour in a little bit of this blue. We're gonna save the white for the next layer. All right, I'm gonna move these extra buckets off to the side and we'll go ahead and pour. This soap is eventually gonna be tilted on an angle, but for now, I'm gonna go ahead and just pour like so all the way down. And those colors are not gonna be very distinct in this first layer either. I don't have to worry about scraping out the little container because I'm gonna be using it again. So starting with this first layer on a very flat surface, I'm gonna go ahead and add the mica line. Now, we are gonna tilt this on an incline and the mica line is gonna move. And my hope is that it looks really lumpy, that it kind of curdles up a little bit. Maybe some of the mica gets mixed in. Like I said, we don't want it very distinct at all, and I think this is gonna be the best way to achieve it. We essentially want the mica to make sort of a skin on top of this soap. 
All right, so let's watch this move and see if I if I get what I wanted. Yes, you can see it kind of wrinkling up there and the skin moved a little bit. I'm gonna tilt this one the other way. There it is, kind of wrinkling a little. I've got my next layer here and my soap is starting to set up, much to my delight. It's exactly what I wanted. It will probably puncture that first layer, which again, exactly what I wanted. But a good majority, will sit on the top and just look pretty. We've got some white, we've got some gray, and we've got all different shades of blue coming through. We are now going to tilt these the other way. And we're gonna add a little more of the blue, light blue, and white soap mixture to this side. Kinda looks like toothpaste right now. <laughs> We're also going to add a whole bunch of the blue. This is unswirled blue from the big container. I tapped those down a little bit. I know it's kind of hard for y'all to see right now. And we're gonna add a lot more gold. Now this layer will have set up tons more than the first one. So the diagonal line will probably be a bit sharper. In fact, it's set up enough that I can go ahead and take them off the blocks. I've tipped the loaves again, using only one bar underneath this time for this next layer. We're gonna mound it up and put a little more gold. And I'm not gonna cover up entirely the gold on this side either. I'm just gonna sort of add to it by filling in the side. And then we're gonna be done with the mica and we can go ahead and just ladle the rest of the soap in. Okay, add a little more mica on top. We finally have all of the lapis lazuli soap in the mold. It took a while, but we there. And look what a mess I made out of my molds. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna mix up the soap frosting and then clean these up. My soap frosting is now all ready to go, and you can see I have smatterings of gold on the side, and I actually mix the gold with a little teeny tiny bit of antique silver. So that's gonna take the gold from a little bit of like really, really yellow gold to sort of like, I don't know, again, like an antique gold. It's just not as yellow, it's a little more green, I would say. We're gonna do a three, two, one on this soap, and it is still a little bit liquidy because I want wanted to have plenty, and I mean plenty of time to adjust the stones that I'm putting on top because they are quite large. They're gonna add a little bit of weight to these bars and I just wanna make sure that they're perfectly placed so cutting is easy. I also have not added that much gold on top. I really don't want it to pull away from the blue frosting. I just wanted to add a little bit of an accented color. When I first saw people requesting this particular soap in the comments section, I had no idea how to pronounce that name. I was like, Lapis Lazuli, like I don't know where to put the accents on anything. Google was not a big help. They pronounced it wrong. And so I was like, where, where do I know for sure that I can hear this word? And I just remembered all the comments about, and I will say it right this time, Steven Universe. Not Steven's Universe, just Steven Universe. So I looked it up on YouTube and typed it in and was like, oh my gosh, okay, so there is a character and that is how I learned to correctly pronounce that word. <laughs> also, I just saw when her character was introduced, I haven't watched any of the rest of it, and she kind of freaky, man. She looked like she could 100% kick my butt. All the piping is on now, so I'm gonna add a little bit of this Gold Digger Biodegradable Glitter from Eco Stardust. They're in the UK, but shipping is really inexpensive to the US, and I do have a discount code for you guys down below if you're interested. I'm just gonna take a little of this and put it down the sides of the soap, leaving the top relatively empty. Final bit on, 
and it's time to add the stones. Look how absolutely astounding these stones are. We went to multiple different suppliers before we found someone who offered the quality that we really wanted because you guys can see in my hands, these are really big and I wanted whoever bought a lapis lazuli soap bar to get a stone of a decent size. I will leave you guys a link to the supplier and the direct listing that I purchased down below. It's an eBay shop called Jim Avenue. The owner is so friendly and helpful. I highly recommend them. Shipping is super fast and they offer the best price. So I am very carefully going to add these on top of the soap now. I'm going to make sure that they are exactly exactly where they're supposed to be because once again cutting when you have embeds this large can be quite difficult and i really didn't want to do too much to the soap frosting because the gem is such a statement piece that i just feel like adding too much on top could take away from the soap instead of sort of adding to it every single one is unique every single one is special and some of them are a little darker some of them have a little bit more gold flecks in them the gold flecks in these stones are pyrite and calcite that's what makes it so sparkly look at this one you guys wow so after looking at all the stones in it i think they fade into the blue a little too much so i'm gonna add a little bit of biodegradable gold glitter on top. Just a small sprinkling on top of the stones. I think that's gonna help them stand out a little bit. Then I'm also gonna put a very thin gold mica line. Thin as I can do. It really is just gonna look like a little bit of gold drippings on the side. Not even a line, really. Now that's what I'm talking about. So let's go ahead and spritz the top with rubbing alcohol to keep everything looking fresh seal in all of that glitter and that's it lapis lazuli is done here is what the lapis lazuli soap looks like up close and you can see the uniqueness of each and every stone up top it is so beautiful so we will be back to chop up these loaves into bars and take a look at the inside after this quick commercial break so we are back to cut the lapis lazuli soap. It looks even more delightful out of the mold. Look at the edges. <gasps> so shiny. So I'm going to turn this on its side just so that I can line it up accurately with the stones. They are so large. I just want to make sure that I'm not hitting any of them. I'm going to press down gently. We'll pull a bar out of the middle and this is what it looks like on the inside. But get up nice and close so you can see all of the gold on the inside. Those mica lines are really quite stark and the different blue and gray and white got mixed in just enough so that it looks like a real stone. I am digging it and also the smell really fresh, really clean. I think a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of people would like it. I have both Kenny and Caleb in here with me today. Are you guys seeing this? Look at this. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love it. It looks just like the stone. I know. Gorgeous bar. Thank you. I'm so, I'm so thrilled with it. I never, I never know sometimes with those mica lines, but it definitely worked in our favor this time. I'm impressed that all these blues can complement each other as much, and they're all so rich, but it's it all kind of melds together somehow. Yep, I like that you made the uh, gray and gold work together too. Yeah, if I think I think it just has to do with looking at the stone. I'll show you guys a little bit closer. So you can see on this particular stone, it has the white and the blue and the gold, and then it just comes down here to the bar with also the white, the blue, and the gold as well. So which one of you guys is gonna be telling us the question of the day? Question of the day, who's talking? <laughs> <laughs> would you rather say, hey there, every time someone says your name, or would you rather hiccup every time you're about to take a bite of food? For example, hey Kenny, hey there. <laughs> So this is also the one of the important parts of this question is that if you hear your own name in public, you still have to you still have to say it. <laughs> so if it's somebody that you don't know, that's just like, hey, can you come over here? You be like, hey there. <laughs> 
And then the hiccuping is just awful because every time that you go to take a bite, you're just gonna kind of juke yourself out of out of eating it. Because <laughs> you're gonna go, oh, oh, oh. You're gonna have trouble eating for sure. Maybe embarrassing at fine meals and dinners. Well, I rarely have fine meals and dinners, so <laughs> I'm gonna take the hiccuping because I just, I can't with the name thing. That's, that's too risky for me. There are a lot of Katie's out there. If you would like to vote on the question of the day, be sure to click the I in the upper right hand corner of the screen. Obviously, this is a very important question of the day and we need as many votes as humanly possible. Yas, yas. I just, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. This is why last week in the video I was like, I don't know, maybe the Bonnie Highlands I'll put in my shower. This is the one I was thinking of like, okay, but maybe lapis lazuli. If you are interested in ordering one of these soaps, they are going to be available on April 1st, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time at royaltysoaps.com. Stone soaps for us always sell out lightning fast but this month we have really tried to prepare we've made a lot of these we should have a lot available i really hope that everyone who wants one gets one if you aren't subscribed already and would like to see more soapy creations and have fun conversations with my brother and i you can click the subscribe button you can give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it you want to turn on the notification bell you can if you don't i'm not offended and be sure you go out and do something fun for yourself today whether that is going to a natural history museum and seeing some rare geodes and gemstones up close. I recently did that to the Perot Museum in Dallas. It was amazing. There were things there, again, I didn't even know existed and like looked fake. It looked like someone had like made it out of plastic because it was so intricate. Or maybe going and checking out an Etsy shop or Gem Avenue and getting your paws on your very own set of crystals and gemstones just to pretty up your house or something. Either way, do something that makes you happy and I'll see you all soon. Bye for now. Meow.